hopefully we'll provide that space. Uh, we're hoping to build more of a community among our students, give you more of a sense of identity as liberal arts students. Uh, so we think this is extremely important. Uh, the building is also going to be the home of our two premier honors programs, Plan 2 and Liberal Arts Honors. They will be housed on the same floor. Uh, they will actually share some uh, resources, some space, uh, but they will have considerably more space than they currently have, and I have to say it's some of the premier space in the building. Uh, Rick can perhaps tell us a bit more about that. Uh, they will be looking out over the East Mall, Waller Creek. Uh, it's absolutely <coughs> wonderful space for our two signature honors programs. Now, in addition to the student space, the teaching space, our honors program space, uh, there is office and laboratory space uh, for uh, our, uh, many of our social science departments, sociology, geography and the environment, linguistics, uh, part of the anthropology department will be housed in the new, uh, the new building. Uh, uh, it will also house the uh, Population Research Center, which is one of the preeminent uh, uh, centers for the study of, of demography in the country. Uh, it will also house uh, ROTC, <coughs> the three service branches of ROTC. Uh, as you probably know, to build this building, we have to uh, tear down the existing Steinem building, which is the home of ROTC. Uh, we uh, tried for a while to uh, develop uh, uh, plans to renovate other existing space uh, for ROTC, and it frankly did not work out. Uh, so in the end, we decided that the appropriate home for ROTC uh, would be the space that occupies the site of their present building. Uh, so. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, a very large building by UT standards. Uh, it will house most of our social sciences. Uh, and we are designing it so that there is more lab space than any other liberal arts building on campus, including the C building, which is, has a lot of uh, lab space for psychology. Uh, it will be uh, devoted to collaborative research uh, that our faculty and our students are engaged in. Uh, this is the, the kind of work that involves some of the key uh, problems that we face as a global community. Uh, issues having to do with energy, the environment, sustainability. Issues having to do with uh, human conflict, uh, disease transmission, uh, with uh, economic issues. So it'll be uh, devoted to some of the, the main uh, problems that, that, uh, uh, that, that the world faces right now. We'll have some of the best scholars in the country and some of the best students in the country working on those problems in a very collaborative mode in the new building. So I'm tremendously excited. Uh, I want to uh, say one thing. I, I was chair of the psychology department when we were planning the uh, C building. Uh, and uh, at that time, psychology had a national ranking of somewhere between 16 and 20, which is a very respectable out of about 350 rated departments. Very respectable ranking. But when we uh, built the C building, uh, which allowed us to outfit some of the best laboratory space in the country and some of the, the, the best office space and teaching space, uh, we were able to recruit at a level we had never been able to recruit before, both faculty and students. Uh, and currently, uh, the psychology department is ranked around number 10 in the country. I attribute that rise in the national ranking to the quality of that space. And that's what we're going to do for the, the departments and the programs that are going into the new building. I think I've used up about all of my 10 minutes, uh, so I'd like to uh, uh, turn it over to Rick Archer, uh, the architect uh, for the project. Well, I get to do all the high-tech stuff, so, you know, juggling remote controls and laser pointers and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I'm an architect with Overland Partners, graduated from the University of Texas in 1979, and uh, as I've told uh, Dean Deal on a couple of occasions, one of my greatest regrets was that I didn't get a 
an undergraduate degree in liberal arts first. Um, I knew that I wanted to be in a fast track to be an architect. But when I got out, I started to realize what I didn't learn. And I lived across the street in Washington, D.C. from the Librarian of Congress. And um, became really good friends with his family. He had children who were a little younger than I was, some in college. And they went to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and uh, Rhodes. And so, um, you know, I'd kind of go to dinner, and they'd have this dinner table conversation. I'd go home and pull out my dictionary, find out what they were talking about. And uh, finally, one day, uh, Dr. Billington said to me, you know, I've got this great library in here if you ever want to borrow a book. And so, in the years that I lived across the street from him, I read my way through that library because I realized I had to get a liberal arts education one way or the other. Either I was going to do it in school or I was going to do it after school. And so, Part of the reason I tell you that is that someone sitting in this room may end up being an architect. And so one of the things that I hope will come out of this is that not only will you learn about this building, but you'll learn a little bit about what architects do. And maybe you'll be inspired to become one as well. Um, this has really been a privilege. It's, there is nothing more fun than working on a college campus. And there's no greater college campus to work on than your alma mater. And there's, there's a real sense of, I mean, if you feel about the University of Texas the way I do, imagine you know, getting to come back and do the thing that you really love to do and apply it to the place that you love to be at. And um, working with Dean Deal, with the faculty and the students on this uh, has been a tremendous privilege. It's also been a real challenge. And as Dean Deal pointed out, because of the challenge of, of financing this building, and as, as Kevin Hegarty did as well, um, the first thing that we were told is this building must be extremely efficient, it has to be very cost effective, it has to be flexible for the long lifespan of the building because liberal arts is made up of lots of different departments and we don't really know who's going to be here in the long haul. I mean things that we study today may be irrelevant in 10 years and we don't want to design a building that's just geared to one kind of academic pursuit, but one that really allows itself to change. And then, then the other thing is, of course, the technologies are changing so rapidly. You know, the things that, you know, I've got my iPhone up here, I'm working on my Apple, I'm doing, you know, we're doing all this stuff virtually uh, that when I was in school there were no computers. What's it going to look like when the next generation of students comes in? How can we design a building that works not just for today, but for future generations as well? And so that's the challenge that we've uh, been up against and one that I'm really excited about where we've ended up. Now, um, we are currently just finishing up the construction documents. Uh, in architecture terms, you know, that's what you think of as the blueprints. When people say the blueprints, uh, we don't do blueprints anymore. Obviously, it all comes off the computer. We send it digitally to the contractor. They, you know, it's a whole <coughs> different world. But uh, we've gone through all the, the design phases, we've figured out what goes in the building, we've figured out how it fits on the site, the floor plans, uh, what it looks like on the outside. Then we have to do drawings that the contractors use to build the building and that they also use to get final pricing on the building. We've just finished those drawings. Um, we'll go through a process now where the contractors will take it out into the marketplace to what we call subcontractors, you know, to the air conditioning supplier, the electrician, and they'll all price it. And then we will uh, break ground uh, in the beginning of next year, probably actually the beginning of the second quarter of next year, with the goal of being open uh, in early part of 2013. Now, you all may or may not be familiar with the site, but I want to get you oriented. Um, we're actually sitting right here in the Lila B. Etter Alumni Center. And it occurred to me that one of the reasons why we're here is because you don't have this building. You know, the, the next future generations will be meeting like this in the College of Liberal Arts building. Um, this is the East Mall. Uh, we've got San Jacinto here, Speedway here. Uh, the Jackson School of Geosciences is here. The new Student Activity Center is under construction right here. And that's our site. Uh, we recognize the recreation swimming pool. And this green swath right through here is Waller Creek. Uh, personally, I think a really, really important part of the campus. It's one of the last pieces of nature left on the campus. And uh, when I was in school, we chained ourselves to trees to make sure that they didn't get, get cut down. 
at Waller Creek. Uh, fortunately, things have shifted a little bit now and people are actually starting to respect the environment as a, as a way of thinking. Uh, but I think in many ways uh, it is one of the preeminent sites on the campus uh, for a number of reasons. Location. If we backed out and looked at the whole campus, which I don't think I included that slide, this is the geographic center of the campus. If you go from Guadalupe all the way to I-35, from Dean Keaton, or actually north of that, down to MLK. This is the very heart of the campus. It also happens to be a gateway. This is where most of the students are, uh, who <coughs> ride on a bus come. Two-thirds of the students who enter campus today come up this set of steps. So every day, two-thirds of the student body comes right by this building. Um, when I was in school, it was the opposite. Everybody came over from across Guadalupe on the west side of campus. And the west campus really was thrived. West Mall was the place to be. Uh, I really think that what's going to happen in the not-too-distant future with liberal arts building here, student activity center here, uh, and all the <coughs> development on this east side of campus at the east mall is going to be the, the most important thing. And at Speedway is going to be a critical for the South Art. Um, now you might notice also that this is not a very big site. Uh, to fit over 200,000 square feet, we had to do it on six floors, a basement level, five floors above grade. The site that you're looking at shown in orange is 235,000 square feet. So if we're going to put 200,000 square feet of building on that site, that's 235,000 square feet stacks to six floors. That meant we only had about 30,000 square feet that we could carve away at this big block. And what we didn't want to do was create a big, dark, empty building. Um, and so that was another one of the challenges. How do we put that many square feet on this site and still preserve the quality of the environment inside? Uh, looking back at the site from the tower, uh, another reason this is going to be very important, you're going to have great views back to the tower. Um, obviously, it's going to be easy to get to a football game, uh, over to a performing arts event, uh, <coughs> then to the LBJ Library. Uh, we're looking the opposite direction from the stadium. <coughs> We've got the site right here. This is Waller Creek and the alumni site. So uh, we're going to be removing Steinem Hall in the very near future, and the building will sit basically between the East Mall and the pool. One of the things that uh, obviously characterizes this campus is great oak trees. And on the East Mall, those oak trees you know, come across and they really pretty much touch. Uh, what that means is that as an architect, you know, it's kind of sad, but you're really not going to see much of the building. Um, the building is going to be hidden behind uh, these great oak trees. And so that actually is going to be one of the things that's going to make it feel like it's deeply connected to the University of Texas. Um, the entrance from the east side is probably a little daunting. You know, we've got this big fountain that kind of says, don't come in. Uh, and there are plans to change that. Um, under a plan that's been developed, this is the new fountain. Uh, that hopefully will be going in along the East Mall at some point. And so, whereas the, the old fountain was a wall, this fountain says, come in. It's like rolling out the carpet of the East Mall all the way toward the east. And so, we had now another challenge. Design a building that works with the fountain as it is, but design a building that will accommodate the fountain when it becomes this. And as you might imagine, this fountain extends much further to the east. And so that was something that we had to work very carefully on. So here's the, um, here's the roof plan, uh, looking at the building from up above. And our building is, is this one in the middle, Student Activity Center, Jackson School, East Mall. Uh, the drop off, this is showing the new fountain, which becomes this broad set of steps. And one of the things we've done is we've extended a wing of the building out uh, toward Waller Creek in order to create a southern boundary for this fountain. Uh, interestingly, the length of this wing from here to here is about 360 feet. Anybody know how tall the tower is? It's about the same height as the tower. 364, 370, right. 